My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. On today's show, we return to Sandown Raceway in Melbourne for our continuing round two coverage of the Shannons Nationals. Featuring the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge, the Australian Prototype Series and the Radical Australia Cup. Then we head to Wakeful Park Raceway in Goulburn for a brand new season of drifting warfare that is the High Tech Drift All-Star Series. This is Speed Week. Welcome to Sandown International Motor Raceway, as the sign says, the home of horsepower. And we're about to see one of the highest horsepower fields available in the Australian motorsport landscape let loose on this fantastic historic layout here and uh, the little wedge of land between Dandenong and Springvale here in Melbourne. There is a very funky, a very distinctive paint scheme on the 23 Red Racing Porsche this weekend. I thought we'd stop by and have a chat with a young man who's got an enormous amount of talent. Has spent the early part of his career in Formula 4 in this country and then, of course, went over and competed as a Red Bull junior in, in, uh, in Europe. Lewis Leeds, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too, Rusty. How are you settling in here to the Michelin Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge? Getting used to it. Um, a lot different to what I've been racing so far in my career. But, uh, yeah, the team's given me a great car. Got a great engineer, Rob RP. He's, uh, he's fast tracking my development. And how have you, in the midst of the, the competition, we've been, Richard Crowell's been talking about the calibre of young racers here. It's, it's a tough championship in 2018, isn't it? Yeah, um, in comparison to last year, I think the depth of the pro drivers here, and even some of the pro am, they've, they've got a lot of talent. So, um, yeah, every weekend we're going to, uh, to tracks that everyone's sort of been on. I know Max and Cooper, they raced Australian Formula Ford last year, so they know their stuff, but so do I. I've been there uh, 2015, I was racing Formula Ford, so um, yeah, it's a really competitive field. So it's round two of the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia. They're still talking about round one. The opening hit out was an amazing success at the Band Motorsport Park and this championship is just getting better and better. We're already two races in the weekend. We're getting ready for race three. The first one on Saturday afternoon was a cracker. It was won by Simon Fallon with Chelsea Angelo second. That's how they grid it up for race two earlier on today. It was a great drive. There were some drivers coming through the field as well. Max Vidal in the 77 Sonic Motor Racing car penalised for contact with Cooper Murray in race one right at the back of the field. This was turn one. Big moment. Four into one at Sandown. It just doesn't work. Four cars involved. Daniel Studdett, Rob Woods, Ben Stack and the youngster Christian Pancioni who got the damage in his number 75 Ash Seawood Motorsport car. This was the view inside the youngster. Quite a hefty hit. Punched the radiator out in the left front corner and that would be the end of his race. That also put the race under safety car for the first time. In cool but crisp conditions here at Sandown Raceway. A brief safety car intervention. Fallon led the field back to green. Chelsea Angelo was in close company and applying the pressure. In third place was the youngster from 23 Red Racing, Lewis Leeds. That was the 17-year-old from Glenelg in South Australia, Tom Taplin, just having an off down at turn one. So just when we thought things would settle down, the field got to the rise at turn six and seven. And unfortunately for Chelsea Angelo, a massive impact at Dandenong Road. Both sides of the car heavily damaged. The young Melbournean got out of the car unscathed, but it was a huge impact. 
and would end her weekend in the Pace Wall Racing Porsche. It would also end race two. The field going back to pit lane as lengthy repairs were undertaken on the big wall. Lengthy repairs as well for this car. A massive job for Wall Racing to get it back on track in time for round three. Phillip Island in a couple of weeks. So the results for race two are the grid for race three. Simon Fallon will go from pole position. Lewis Leeds and Cooper Murray next. Watch for Cooper in the second row of the grid. Max Badau is rival alongside him. Brett Bolton, best of the Pro-Am runners. Ross McGregor having a really good weekend. With Danny Studdett, Sam Fillmore, Jimmy Vernon and Michael Lochisano the 10. Here's Max Badau on the limiter. Will he be one to watch from the second row? It's time for the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia. The final race of the weekend, and it's a drag race between Fallon and Leeds down towards turn one. We need to watch out for Cooper Murray and Max Vidal because they're going off the second row of the grid. Max hasn't got a very good start, though. Bright yellow and blue Bob Jane t -Mart's car. Huge lock-up, Lewis Leeds on the outside, but he gets it stopped. Turned into turn one. Good start from Brett Bolton. He's in fourth place, just in front of Max Vidal, who didn't get away nicely. So it's the final race of the weekend. We saw race two stopped earlier on in the uh, morning today. Half points were awarded to that, which means as we've got a traffic jam into turn four, Simon Fallon at the moment leads the championship by one point over Cooper Murray with Max Vidal just 11 further behind in third place. We're going to introduce a special guest commentator in just a second while we get this opening lap sorted out. Great cold tyre pace from Simon Fallon in the 96 car. He leads the field down to Dandenong Road for the first time. Lewis leads next, Cooper Murray in third. And we're going to go safety car in the opening lap of this race, which for Richard Bloomfield, which gives me the opportunity to welcome our guest commentator. And I hate doing this because I would much, much rather see them out on the racetrack. This is like, it's not even a runner-up prize for being here, Chelsea Angelo. Uh, this is like, this is the last place trophy is coming and sitting alongside me. I'm glad you're here. I'd much rather thanks, see you on the racetrack though. Thanks, Palsy. Uh, I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, it's much more tougher being on the sidelines. I mean, obviously I would love to be out there, but unfortunately um, the safety car uh, was was due to um, my incident in, in race two, which was unfortunate. I uh, just came in a, a bit too uh, a bit too hot into six and seven, and unfortunately we were in the wall. I mean, we had a really good we had really good pace in uh, in race two, so I was really happy with that, and we can take that into Phil Bile in the next coming round. But yeah, like I said, I would love to be out there, but that's just my spot. Let's see what happens in this one. A restart with Simon Fallon leading the field out of the final corner in front of Lewis Leeds and a very, very fast Cooper Murray locked in behind and instantly he drives that Sonic Porsche down to the yellow line to cover and defend to the big stop at turn one. Ooh, but down Cooper. next, look at Cooper going right outside. around the outside. He did this yesterday, Chelsea. He went around this. the outside up at Dandenong Road. Yeah, he went right around the outside at turn six on Simon. So it's a pretty risky, hairy move, but he got the job done. Especially on cold tyres. Definitely. So great stuff. Cooper Murray, who was a superstar at round one, which was won by Max Vidal. And we'll keep talking about that amazing final race there because it deserves to be talked about for a long time. One of the great Porsche races. So there's 12 laps to go in this. Fallon Murray and Leeds, one, two, and three. But down next. He's in the Bob Jane Sonic car. Brett Bolton up to fifth place. He's leading the Pro-Am standing, so the race within a race in GD3 Cup Challenge. He and Danny Studdard at the moment are locked together on points for the round victory there in Pro-Am. So this is a tiebreaker for them. Danny's just a position back in seventh. So whoever finishes in front of those two cars will win the big trophy that's, in Pro-Am. That's a pretty tight, uh, it's a pretty tight series at the moment. So we'll see who comes out on this. Good stuff for Simon Fallon. How difficult is it on these laps to actually, speaking of, we've lost him. He's back to fourth place, oh, unseen Simon. by us. He's had a moment. What happened there? We were looking further down the field at the Pro-Am battle and Simon's gone from first to fourth. And Cooper Murray now leads the race. Well, I was just about to make the point that how difficult is it when you've got cold tyres, your pressures are down, oh, you yeah. haven't got tyre temp on a restart, it's every corner's a new and exciting adventure. It is, it is. I mean, especially on cold tyres as well, you know, you're not going to feel those tyres come on to about lap four, or lap five, or even lap six. So it's really important to try and get up the top and try and get up to speed as quickly as what you can to try and get the gap on everyone. So. Yeah, it's definitely a hard thing for sure. Jimmy Vernon with a good run out of turn four, looking to get up the inside of Brett Bolton on the run up to six. So we'll have a look at that 
at the back of the shot. He's done that in the Opticoat car from McElroy Racing. Uh, Jimmy, who qualified reasonably well, got caught out a little bit by the red flags in qualifying yesterday, uh, went to do a launch in race one and dropped the clutch, and there was no clutch. So it broke that clutch on the Opticoat car, so McElroy Racing did the change. In three racing laps this morning, he worked his way up inside the top ten. He's now fifth place at the moment, which is a good result for the young Sydney sider. At least he's got good tyres. Yeah, yeah. many laps yesterday. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and now Brett Bolton under pressure from Danny Studdard. So this is the fight for the Pro-Am victory, the race within a race. Whoever finishes in front of those two cars, they're just exiting turn one, will win that class. And it's a pretty hotly contested championship this year. As much as the pro class is at the front of the field, the Pro-Am is just as oh. well. That's a big moment. Ben Stack, a little bit too much curb, looking to go down the inside there at turn three. And Take he's looped his car. Started. Really bumpy in there. We were talking about it in the last race at Chelsea, that those bumps before you're trying to break the car at turn two. Looks like they're worse than they've ever been. They are. I mean, especially on Friday wet practice as well. The bumps going into turn two is unbelievable. So you want to be able to try and get a good braking line into two to set up for three. How do you make that? Because he was looking down the inside of Sam Fillmore, who's in the 27 car, and Sam just closed the door. He was. Yeah, I just, just I don't, quiet. I don't know if he was up far enough um, on the car in front. So maybe if he was up a little bit more far enough, he would have made that one for sure. Stephen Johnson will have a look at that. The series driver standards observer plays the same role for Carrera Cup Australia as well. Not too long until their next round. They head up to the top end at Hidden Valley, actually the week after we're at mm. Phillip Island for the next round of Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge. So sublime to the ridiculous. Phillip Island in the middle of winter to Darwin in the middle of winter. There's about 30 degrees difference between the two. That's of them. crazy. Raced there definitely crazy because our next round's at Phillip Island and I can guarantee it'll that's definitely going to be a cold one for sure. Good weather for Penguins. Uh, <laughs> Max Vidal has got a really good run now out of turn four and Lewis leads in the 23 red racing cars had to defend down the inside. Pretty got textbook it done stuff. Nicely. Bit of a wobble getting that car stopped though. He was mm. right on the limit but a good move. So now he can go out after his little rival from round one, the teenagers at the front of the field, Murray V. Vidal, with Lewis Leeds back in third place. Um, we touched on it in race one. If you're wondering why Lewis has got the brightest livery in the world, and we're about to see it now in replay, uh, it's a testament to the sponsor for that car this weekend, Yarra Valley Towing. Uh, Kirky, who owns that business, is noted for getting around in the Hawaiian shirt. Um, he's got a bit of a cancer yes, battle on his hands at the I moment. I did, yeah. But I did see that. really nice touch for 23 Red to put a Hawaiian shirt on the race yeah, car. Yeah, that's nice. In tribute to their mate. Right, yeah. It's brilliant. That's awesome. Good work. Here's the fight with Brett Bolton and Danny Studdard once again. Brett's in a really good mood. Uh, last night, his business, Bold Living, won one of the major... Australian Home Industry Awards and an awards function. Unreal. Yeah. That's so, incredible for him. Well done to Brett, one of those guys that balances a, a successful business and the pressures of running a company and then going car racing's his golf game, I suppose, on the weekend. Um, but does it very, very well. That's always a good game to uh, to go to. He <laughs> walking around a paddock chasing a white ball <laughs> for me. So this is a good scrap. Uh, he's a good driver. The, the team were Ooh. wrapped with his launch in race two early on. Now, Simon had an off. Yeah, it looks like it. I think he's run that car off at turn six. Mm. And it's missing from where I'm sitting, the little front splitter, the rubber splitter yeah, that it has. clips on under the mm. radiator intakes. And that actually generates quite a little bit of downforce on these cars. Yeah, it definitely it definitely does. Having um, that loss on the front splitter definitely has a lot of that downforce as well. But it also does upset in terms of turning as well. So I've definitely come off with a, with a few of the um, front splitters as well. It's definitely taken the turn in. So that's why the 96 car is struggling. I'll check the points for you because I think they were crunching the numbers before, and if he finished fourth, he was still going to be in a reasonable spot to win the round. What he won't want is Jimmy Vernon going through and grabbing that position away. Now, Jimmy's got a better race car than Simon because he's not handicapped by having that damage to the front end. So this is going to be an interesting fight with seven laps to go. Mm. We'll follow that story for you. This is the other story of the round battle with Bolton and Studdard next. Um, what's been the biggest thing you feel like personally you've improved on from round one to round two? Bearing in mind you've done only a little bit of testing before the start of the yep. year, you haven't had a lot of seat time in the last 
18 months in your, your racing career. What's been the change? Have you felt just more comfortable this weekend from where you were at round one? Yeah, I think so. I think with Tail and Ben, obviously it was a brand new track for everyone. So going into that weekend and having thoughts that, you know, I haven't raced for 18 months, you know, I haven't done a lot of race starts in these cars before, I didn't know what my competition was going to be like. So it's not the ideal way to have those thoughts travelling in your mind. So yes, I was a little bit nervous over that weekend. Uh, but we still did a pretty good job for our first round considering having a race for a while. But we came into Sandown and I came into Sandown knowing that I had a lot of confidence and I was comfortable with everything. I've been here before, I've won races here before. So we came into this weekend and my goal for the weekend was to be on it on Friday at the top and we did that successfully so uh, we came this weekend and just having that confidence and feeling comfortable about the whole weekend definitely makes a difference and obviously we got unreal race starts as well so that's definitely been an improvement from Adelaide. You said to me after practice on Friday that you wanted to hit it hard early and uh, which you felt like you didn't do at the bend and you were, yeah. you were top three in the wet practice sessions on Friday so I think you and that's, and that's the main thing too, Richard. I mean, you don't want to come to the end of the weekend and, and be on it on Sunday where you could have been doing that on Friday, you know. So I definitely achieved those goals that weekend. Battle's going on all the way through the field. Christian Pancioni is on the comeback trail in his Class B car. And he's just worked his pay past David Gregg. Oh, now, this is the Pro-Am battle for the, battle. the lead and for the round victory. And Brett Bolton hustled wide at Turn 1. Danny Studdett goes through. And that's a change of position, sixth and seventh on the road, but the context is bigger than that because it's the big trophy. Oh, stuttered. Oh, wow. That was a big, hairy moment. That's easy to do on the exit there, isn't it? That yeah. big curb on the exit. You don't want to take too much of that exit curb because you can get dragged and bogged down and get really close to that wall. So it's a, quite a fine line to hit that exit curb. So we just caught the end of this as they were braking for turn oh, one. Is that easy to do, to grab that brake down Yeah, there? it is. I mean, you've really got to sort of uh, modulate the brake pressure quite well. You don't want to sort of be on it and off it and on and off it because it really upsets the, um, the modulation of the brake. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's just locked up his front left too much and just gone a bit wide into one. More battles all the way through the field. It's a hallmark of Porsche racing. Cooper Murray goes through. Max Vidal breaks the lap record. The gap down to two seconds now. He's going out after him. I think he's going to run out of laps, but he's going after the leader. 111-12 for the Sonic Porsche, chasing down the Ash Seawood run, number 36 car that leads the way. A couple of sensational teenagers who put on a show the opening round of the championship. That's a look through the field, the relative positions where our top half a dozen cars are. Sixth and seventh on the road, first and second in Pro-Am. And whoever finishes first out of these two on the road in this race will win the Pro-Am round. So they were tied on points coming into it. Danny Studdett, who has been getting huge amounts of miles in recent years in Porsche Cup cars especially, as Max gets down the inside of Sam Fillmore. So that's not for position, that's putting him a lap down. It cost him a little bit of time though, getting lap traffic on that run down the hill especially. He a lot of time in that final sector. Christian Pancioni, another youngster who'd done barely any racing before the opening round at Taylor Bend. He's another one Ash Seward's discovered this year. He's just gone and hired a whole bunch of young, young superstars to drive his racing cars. Actually, Ash came up to me as, uh, oh, Barwood looks down the inside of Ross McGregor, couldn't get it done at Dandenong Road. Right? Ross, um, Ash Seward came up to me after quality and said, uh, when was the last time one team had locked out pole position in all three classes? And oh, I could, wow. I couldn't give him an answer, but he was pretty proud of that. It was That's a, awesome. a good effort. Here is Cooper Murray. Half a racetrack to go. And uh, it's the first and second place there. Then we go back to Lewis Leeds. Lewis has had a pretty decent weekend. Solid. Just, again, like we talked about, accumulating points. That's it. I mean, Lewis has done a great job so far this weekend. Um, he's accumulated points, so that's the main thing as well. And he hasn't made a mistake, so he's done really well. Fallon under pressure. This is the last roll of the dice for Jimmy Vernon. A good driving from Fallon. Ooh. Just put his car in the right position, Ooh. but Jimmy looking to go around the Ooh. outside here. That's big. That's massive. Wow, big I've moves. never seen that move ever <laughs> happen before. That <laughs> is enormous. Great stuff for Jimmy Vernon. Great stuff for Cooper Murray. He'll bounce back from disappointment yesterday. Delight today. A victory in race three. The Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge. Max Vidal, another one driving through the field, gets home in second. Lewis leads third.
Jimmy Vernon beat Simon Fallon with an enormous move on the final lap. And Danny Studdard, after a race-long battle with Brett Bolton, will just pip his rival for the Pro-Am class round victory to the line. McGregor, Barwood, Michael Hovey inside the top 10. Chelsea, thanks for joining me. Uh, Thank please you. don't join me in the commentary box for the rest of the year. I'd much rather see you on the racetrack. Likewise, I'm the same. Looking forward to following your Thank career. You. That's Chelsea Angelo. That's the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge. Take a break from Sandown. So much more racing to come.